One of the undisputed greatest rides on the planet is Fury 325 at Carowinds. This is a B&M Giga Coaster, the tallest roller coaster in the world with a lift hill. An absolutely monstrous ride stretching over 6,000 feet in length going across two states. It starts in North Carolina, passes into South Carolina, 325 foot height, 320 foot drop, 95 miles per hour. It is fast. It is smooth. It is intense. It is a full package. And I think that's why it is almost unanimously praised. Everyone that gets off this ride has nothing but positive things to say about it. I had the opportunity to first ride Fury 325 a little less than a month after it opened back in 2015, and it instantly became my favorite roller coaster in the world. While it is no longer my favorite I've ever ridden, it is still up there for me, and it has always been one of my all time favorites. There's a lot to love about this roller coaster, and we're going to talk about this layout specifically, what makes Fury so good. So let's first start with the basics here, and that is presentation. When you approach Carowinds, Fury 325 stands out, obviously because it's the tallest attraction there, but this thing stretches across the front gate. It makes an impression. Everywhere you look, there's that beautiful teal track with the white supports. The colors honestly couldn't have been better. This thing is beautiful. And then how it stretches across the front gate here. The main walkway that you take to get into Carowinds is this access bridge where Fury 325 flies directly over your head at this crazy banked angle and then dives back underneath you. And they have these plexiglass windows set up on either side so you can just watch the train fly all around you. It is brilliantly done. It's no wonder when you arrive at Carowinds, the first thing everyone wants to do is go to Fury. And while there's certainly a strategy there visiting a museum park of, oh, maybe we should go to the back first. I mean, even as coaster enthusiasts, we see that and we're like, you know, even though everyone's going to go to Fury first, I too want to go to Fury first for obvious reasons. This thing is eye-catching. So you make your way to Fury 325's Plaza. And what Cedar Fair has done here really is fantastic. They have given Fury its own dedicated area where all it is is the entrance to the ride, the station, the gift shop, a set of bathrooms, some lockers, that's it. And yet that area is always popping. Even from people that aren't riding Fury, they just like walking up to this thing because it is so pretty. Who would have thought a lift hill and a sign could be so photogenic? But you walk up there, you see all those hexagons, you see this giant Fury sign. The overall ride theme is a Hornet. It's a very loose theme. It partially ties into the Carolina area because of the Charlotte Hornets, but this is not a direct reference to the Charlotte Hornets. They're kind of doing their own thing here, which is totally fine. Not like there's a bunch of theming, it's more just like atmosphere. I feel like Fury has more of a vibe than a theme. So yeah, there's not a whole lot to the queue here. It's mostly just switchbacks. The coolest thing about the entrance to Fury is that big roller coaster sign. I think it's one of the coolest signs ever. It's probably my second favorite right behind Banshee at Kings Island. So you make your way into the station and right away, I wanna talk about the crews here because they are always pumping out trains for this ride. You wanna talk about fast operations? Every time I go here, they are running three trains. They are getting this thing sent out in like a minute, rarely ever stacking on the brake run. It is such an impressive sight. So yeah, you gotta quickly board that vehicle. There's a seatbelt that you'll pull across, pull down your lap bar, and before you know it, you're out the door. While Fury 325 does not have a cable lift, its chain pulls you up really fast and it is not loud either. You know that sound when the chain dog is hitting the anti-rollback. It's that click, click, click. You don't really get that here. This pulls you up to the top fast and silently. There's a cool voiceover telling you, welcome to Fury. You hear this awesome sound effect. If you look off to your left, you'll be able to see downtown Charlotte. It's a beautiful view. To the right, a stunning look at all of Carowinds. And when you crest over, you're looking at an 81 degree drop and you feel like you are falling forever. Even though this ride is only 20 feet taller than Intimidator 305, this drop feels a lot bigger. I don't know if it's because of the angle or the way the train takes it. Beats me. I'm not an engineer. But every single row, you just feel this awesome weightlessness, especially if you're in the back. Getting pulled over that thing, you're just falling for ages. It is so sweet. You hit that valley, there's a decent chance you might gray out as you're going up into that first turn. You immediately do your first kind of rapid twist to the right and then twist back out of that to the left. And there's a lot of this kind of side-to-side -side motion throughout Fury. What I think it does so well is it has a great balance of a little bit of everything. One thing that people love about Intimidator 305 is those crazy transitions. It's the same type of thing with like Maverick. But for some people, that's a little too much. It takes it almost a little too fast. I myself, as an enthusiast, love that. But if you aren't prepared for it, it can be a little abrupt. 
Fury 325 has those rapid twists, but it does it in a way that it's not jolting. Not only is it smooth in the way that the wheels are hugging the track, but it's smooth in the way that the train navigates the course. And when you're sitting in the back, what's crazy is even though these aren't airtime hills, Sometimes when you're twisting out of some of these maneuvers, you almost get a little pop of ejector airtime there. Yeah, I know. I just said that, but it's true. It's, it's so bizarre. Even though this ride is a B&M and there are so many B&Ms out there, this doesn't really feel like any other B&M on the planet. And I'm including the other Giga Coasters here with Orion and Leviathan. Fury really is a one of a kind attraction. And part of me worries that we're never going to see something like this ever again, because I do know that this was a very expensive attraction. Even though Orion was built well after Fury, Orion was more like Leviathan than Fury. It has some of those kind of low to the ground, fast paced maneuvers, but also has some defining moments where you kind of crest back up. And one of those big moments here is this turnaround. After you take one of these wide turns and you pass over the bridge in this kind of sideways drawn out bank, you pass into what people call the treble clef. And it's called that because if you stand at a certain angle, it looks like the music note. And then you pop into what I think is one of the coolest moments of the ride. For a lot of people, I know this is their favorite moment. It's a point where the roller coaster kind of stalls out at the top when you're hanging sideways. And that's before you plunge down under this bridge. It marks the point on Fury when you return to go back the way you came, but it does it in a way that doesn't feel like a traditional turnaround in any sense. You almost get a smaller version of this hill on Orion at the end of the ride right before you hit the brake run. So if you've done Orion but not Fury, think of that moment, but like a lot larger. Plunging under this bridge is awesome awesome. There's these hexagon rings that are underneath that you fly through and at night they glow green. So Fury is a pretty cool night ride. I definitely recommend it if you get the chance. Also because, you know, the later in the day you do the attraction, there's a very good chance they'll be running a lot faster than it would if you rode in the morning. So depending on when you ride it, if you're doing it in the morning, even though it says Fury 325 goes 95 miles per hour, maybe you're going 92 or 93. So likewise, if you're going late at night, you might be exceeding 95 miles per hour. But don't worry, when you ride Fury once, you're gonna be hooked, you're gonna wanna do it over and over again. This is an attraction that's hard to stay away from. So when you emerge out of that bridge, you twist to the left, there's a very brief section of straight track as you're gradually descending into the ride's massive airtime hill. There is a trim on this hill. Depending on when you ride it, it may not hit as hard. Kind of causes the train to slow down a little bit at the top, which gives some very nice floater airtime. But I think the main reason why that trim can be a bit of a downer is it could affect how the ride takes these last few elements. But for the most part, you're still going pretty fast through this. After that hill, you have this helix underneath that first turn. What I love about this helix is there's one particular support where you're sitting on the right side of the train. It passes so close to you, you feel like you could reach out and touch it. And so I think every single time that I ride this, I have at least one arm extended trying to whack this support. Of course, you never can. I mean, it's clearances. It's kind of tricking your brain into thinking that's closer than it actually is, but it's still pretty cool. Following that helix, you have some smaller airtime hills give some great airtime and that's what takes you into the brake run 6,602 feet of track I wonder how much of that is the actual brake run because I mean it is a fairly long brake run but you don't mind I mean there is so much ride here I think this is the perfect roller coaster for any thrill seeker it's tall it's fast it's not jerky it's not overly intense it is just pure fun I cannot emphasize that enough so for Fury 325's final score, yeah, obviously I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I do think this is a perfect roller coaster. It's about as good as it gets. Like I said towards the beginning, is it my number one to this day? I wouldn't say so, but I think it depends on personal preferences. I can totally understand why this would be someone's favorite attraction of all time. But those are my thoughts on Fury 325 at Carowinds. Let me know down in the comments below. If you've ridden this ride, what you think of it, if you agree with the points I've brought up, if you think there's anything I missed, and of course, stay tuned for more coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.